hi folks thank you very much for popping in to um, come and see my little session about an action research project that I did last year as part of my advanced teacher status portfolio, my ATS portfolio. Um, it was a, a quip, a quality improvement project for which I used action research. Um, and yeah, a little, I popped a little gif on here for you to, um, you know, it's not me, um, just to let you know. Um, however, it is definitely a visual representation of how I felt doing this project and working with all of my peers. It's called Cooking Up Community and it is based on uh, uh, my poster here that I drew up at the end of my ATS um, portfolio year to present. Um, as you can see, I went fully with this little metaphor. Um, metaphors really, really help me to visualize and make sense of the world around me. Um, I'm a, a big fan of use, using those metaphors. So um, if you will, just um, just roll on with me. This is uh, my poster, which is, as you can see, like a little menu. And I'm gonna go through each of these little sections in turn in just a moment. Um, but just to set that scene, when I talk about kitchens and um, culinary communities and ingredients and recipes, and all this kind of thing, um, I want you to think about um, a kitchen that's at home, that's comfortable, that's maybe, um, you know, in my mind, it's actually, I don't have a kitchen like this, but this is, this is in my mind, this is my visualization, which is a big open kitchen diner where all of my friends and peers are all just kind of like sitting around this middle island um, and sharing their ideas as we're cooking together. That's my imagination, okay? So less Gordon Ramsay bar orders at you at the front of the the kitchen more that kind of like homely comfortable feel so that's where I'm going with this metaphor so please if you will allow me we're gonna um, get started with what this was about so as you can see in front of you I've got uh, there's three different kitchens these are the three different kitchens that um, I was exploring and um, I, um, exploring with and facilitating. So we have ESOL teachers, teacher trainers and industry trainers. Let's crack on with our amuse-bouche or the aim. So what what was the actual intention? What you know, what was the what was the aim for these this project? And it was to discover ways in which to dissolve that screen between us, that, that barrier that was between us in those online spaces in order to develop a joyful and supportive online community practice that created meaningful and authentic interactions by devising a series of effective online and um, informal CPD strategies. So um, you might be thinking, oh goodness me, that's like, that's a bit of a mouthful. So um, I'm going to go through and explain how I did all of these things. But we're going to start with a little starter, a rationale. Why? Why did I want to do all these things? Well, if we th I think back to the context that I placed us in before, which was um, COVID 2021, and there was a lot of lockdowns and people were working, teachers, um, trainers, practitioners were working in very, very isolated ways. And I was really concerned about um, all of our social emotional well-being, you know, um, and we were focused as trainers, we we're very, very much and mentors, very focused on our practitioners, of course. Um, but I found that, um, you know, one particular um, group of trainers that we we're working with, um, you know, no, who was looking after them because they were focused so much on and um, putting so much energy into helping and supporting teachers and practitioners. And I just thought, who, you know, who was really helping these trainers who are working so isolated? And in some ways, we're quite used to working in isolated ways, working from home, etc. But they'd still usually get out and get to go and ex and that's what a lot of trainers really love. Actually, love going into all these different organisations, like physically. You you know, and being in those spaces, being in those, you know, effy spaces and the beautiful variety that it is, but not being able to do that anymore, you know. Um, and at the same time, also teachers that were spending a lot of their time and energy supporting, um, you know, their learners during such a challenging time. 
So it was all about that well-being. It was about that isolation, but it was also about I saw this potential to develop this model of of um, online informal professional learning and it be seen with the same kudos as um, CPD you know um, and how important it was to have those kind of informal spaces that um, that coffee and chat that coffee and chat is actually really important it doesn't need to be for an entire hour of course but it's so so important um, and that is because it is allowing peers to just work together, to share, to um, and entrust this kind of sense of belonging within the sector, within your peers, within your department, organisation, and just in general with us all together. All the way through this, you'll see some lovely little quotes that have popped in there as well from some of the kitchen practitioners. This one particular, um, she said she loved being part of a team a real community and coming together every couple of weeks to, you know, catch up and share ideas. And, you know, you wouldn't, if that space wasn't available, then they wouldn't necessarily do that and be working in their own ideas. So just being able to come together, share ideas, share things that have gone wrong as well. That's as important. So how did I do this? How did I go about it? What was my action in this action research? Well, my first was doing a little bit of background research and that was um, attending, as many of us did during that time, a massive variety of online CPD sessions um, from quite passive and didactic to all the way to holistic. So um, and by doing that, I was really reflecting on, uh, I just noticed a huge, huge difference massive cavernous difference between all these different online training events and courses and webinars um, and yeah so I reflected on all of them and kind of thought about w which ones were I most engaged in which ones were I most productive in and I found that actually the ones I was most productive in were the ones that where I really felt like um, I'd been nurtured in, in that community, that learning space, um, the ones where, um, you know, even if we're only together for two hours, so they'd really taken, the trainers had really taken a the time to allow us to kind of like get to know each other and share, um, even if it's only a few minutes. So there was a few different things that you can see here listed that um, really, really stuck out to me. And these are the things that really stuck out um, amongst um, all the different ones that I looked at. But three things in bold were the things that I decided, the approaches that I decided um, particularly to explore um, and um, experiment with. One was a well-being check-in. So having some time at the beginning of the session that is dedicated to asking people how they are and I don't just mean how are you doing yeah I'm all right I don't that's two seconds I don't mean that I mean a really authentic time where people can just um stop think for themselves and consider how they're doing right there and then it can be right there at that very moment it can be that day it can be that week how are they doing and being asked that question when well, they might not have been asked that question that week or they might have been asked it but not given real um people haven't listened to their answer so i, I gave a big you know uh, the, the the um spaces that i then facilitated the first 15 20 minutes a big chunk of it would be that well-being check-in Next was thinking environment rounds, really, really inspired by um, the thinking environment practices. I won't go into that now because I don't have enough time. But if you're interested in thinking environments, then please have a little look at Nancy Klein, um, her website, Time to Think. And also, um, if you know of Joy FE, check Joy FE out on Twitter, hashtag Joy FE. Um, all their events are um, done um, in thinking environment spaces. And the last one is digital sandpits. A little shout out here to my um, peer, uh, Eve Shepherd, who introduced me to this term, this idea of having somewhere to play, somewhere to come and play with digital. Um, so, you know, not just being told, hey, Mentimeet is a really good idea and, you know, you get to experience it and you use it yourself. It was actually a space in breakout rooms to go and make one yourself, to go and then practice sharing screen and sharing it and seeing how it works. And you, ex you know, explore um, then presenting it and pushing it and audience push and all, you know, all these like little intricacies. That's what those digital sandpits allowed you to do. 
So then what happened after that initial exploration, I then that's when the action really kicked in. And um, that was through trials of activities and um, that they were based on both pedagogical and paragogical approaches. And by that, I mean this working together at peer to peer community um, focused space, which encouraged practitioners to try out new ideas um, with one another. So I'm imagining that island again, that said in that lovely big kitchen, really working together whilst nurturing a feeling of belonging within the group. Um, so no one's sitting in the other room, everyone's together, really working together, you know. Um, so those trial, the main trials were carried out over two terms and each term was stimulated by some kind of intervention, a conversation stimulus, and that was on Mentimeter or Jamboard. And the answers to those activities informed the way in which I then carried out the action research. So the way that I um, reflect on it, reflected on it, changed it, adapted it, swapped and changed different ingredients and changed how I cooked the ingredients, you know, that kind of thing. So then I could find the most effective recipe for each kitchen. A uh, practitioner from Kitchen 3 here at the bottom mentions um, the experienced resource that can be plugged into an experienced resource. And that really, really like really makes stands out to me because um, we, I mentioned above about be, it being a peer to peer community. And that's what that experienced resource is. It's not one person at the front of the room. It's that it's everyone. It's that it's everyone coming together and it's that whole community that's what that experience resource is it's everyone's experiences um, coming together so what were my findings well i found that practitioners appreciated that time and space to come together and connect i found that they uh, experiencing those digital pedagogies and in an authentic manner helped improve their digital competence and confidence um, trainers felt an increased sense of belonging um, with their peers, with regular staff rooms. So not just one offs, but re that regularity with a familiar structure they could expect and rely on. That doesn't mean in a full agenda, by the way, but some kind of structure that they knew was coming. They knew they were going to be asked, how are you, for example. That leads me to that question being so important, allowing people to just kind of like um, stop and park their feelings before then kind of like going on to the session and it led to more productive sessions thinking environment allowed people to just everyone had a voice everyone had an opportunity of a voice without status being in there you know and it got rid of that non it got rid of the, the hierarchy within the space um, and there practitioners from all the kitchens felt isolated in the working environments but allow having this um, informal professional learning space did have a positive impact on their well-being lastly i found that actually i went into this thinking there was going to be one recipe and there wasn't one recipe at the end um, well, I went into this thinking there was going to be one recipe for each of the different kitchens, but there was actually one recipe in the end that was formed that worked for all the different kitchens, but obviously with a few little ingredients as substitutes. Um, yeah, and, and since actually since the project, it's had a profound impact on the way we facilitate all of our informal online spaces and nurture sector communities. And you can see a few of the new kitchens there. Reading Circle and FE Research Circle is open to everybody, by the way. So, you know, if you want to get in on that, have a little look at those hashtags. The last thing there at the bottom and um, the sides, that's a dissemination. Um, if you would like to have a little look at the reflective journals that I wrote throughout um, the action part of my research, so those two terms, including all of the Mentimeter and Jam boards and all those stimulus prompts, um, have a little look at um, those two Wakelet collections at the bottom there. Now, just bringing it all back together again. I know there was a lot there. So if you um, if you want to have a little closer look at this, um, then do let me know. Email me or find me on Twitter at Chloe Fibonacci. Ask me any further questions if you have any. There's loads of research that's been going on um, similar to this that really kind of, oh, you know, says it's talking about professional learning, how important it is. It really, really is. And you know what, to finish off, I'm going to say, if you've not been asked this today, I want to ask you, how are you? Thanks for listening.